Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand to your feet. And we're going to bring up this great man of God. We're going to bring up this great man of God. Let's give God a hand, praise for Pastor Brent Paysinger in the house, y'all. Pastor Brent Paysinger. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There is a name I love to hear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love right. to sing his words. Yes. Yes. It sounds All right. like music to my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Can I just say that one more time? Yeah. There is a name I love to hear. How I love to sing his words. It sounds like music. Can you help me say, oh, oh. how I love Jesus. Oh, yes. oh. Sing, oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Now come on and help me say it like this. Say, to me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. Because he first loved me. Now just help me sing. before you long today, but I give God praise for our illustrious pastor, yeah. Pastor Eric Jackson. Yeah. And, and, and his lovely, lovely wife, Pastor Constance, First Lady Constance Jackson. I, I give God praise for you, the congregation. I give you praise this, this afternoon. I give God praise for my, my lovely wife, yeah. my better half. Yeah. Amen. I give God praise for her I just want to say before everybody, baby, I thank you. I thank you for just hanging in there with me and believing in me when folk was laughing at me and telling me I was crazy for believing that God called me to preach. I give God praise for her. She, she, she left everything and everybody. And we moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, to the cornfields of Indianapolis, Indiana. I, I told my dad had moved out there. Can I just talk to y'all for a minute? My, my, dad, my dad had moved out there uh, probably about 20 years before I did. And when he went, I promised that I would never go to move out there. I would come visit, but I'm, I'm not moving out there. But you, you know, you got to be careful what you say you'll never do, you know, because, you know, we, we may have a plan, but God has the master plan. And so I find myself doing the thing that I said 
I would not do. Let me tell you something. It's a special. It might be cold out here right now, a little bit, a little bit cool, but it's a special kind of cold in Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana. I praise God that He brought me through that. Amen. But 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 God has really uh, caused some things to really come into to fruition, come into manifestation. And we got ordained in 2012. God has uh, elevated us to a, the next level. Amen. And, and I got ordained in, in Muncie, Indiana. And uh, the day that I got ordained, I fell on my knees and I began to ask God, well, what is it? What is it that you want me to do? I, I've been here for 10 years and I said I would never come. And, 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 and my home is in California. And what is it? What is it? What is it? And, and, and just before I start crying out to the Lord like that, I had another pastor. I did not know that he had my number. And, and, and he called me out of the blue. And he told me that he was from California. Well, he was originally from Indianapolis, but he moved to California. And he was out here at another person's church. And God had called him to preach. When it was time for him to go back, God told him to go back. He told me that the man of God that whose church he's in now, that he was sitting under, treated him really, really bad. Treated him real bad. And he didn't understand what God was doing. Two years later, that man of God died. It was over him. And he became pastor of the church. Make a long story short, he called me. And he told me, God said for you to go home. Mind you, I didn't know he had my telephone number. And I had been asking God, what, am, what do you want me to do? And so, without no money, without having no way to get to California with my stuff, my family, I packed up my house. And everything that I needed to transfer out here without no money, God made a way. And so, and so it lets you know when, when, when God says to move, you ought to move. And I want, I want to say before we get into this, I want, I want to just, I thank God for my big sister. I thank God for my big sister. Amen. She's truly been a blessing to me. I was listening to her. I said, man, listen to her, how she's grown. Just, I'm just so happy for what God is doing for you. And, 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 and I could just, I could go on and on, but I just give God the praise. I, I don't want to be too long, but I just give God the praise for everything that he's doing. She was talking about calling in marriages, and, 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 and I believe that they're coming from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Amen. As long as you stay connected to your man of God. I want to tell you, you know, I was dating Sister Pace Singer, and we were, honestly, we were just having fun. We were just having fun, you know. And, and I've always, I've been a church boy all my life, and she was going to a Bible study one night, and I had never met Bishop Turner. And, and she brought me in, and he was calling in marriages when we walked through the door. From the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, I'm calling you now, Bishop Ed. And, 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 and I said, wow, check this dude out. You know, I'm like, well, I didn't know I was going to be set up. You know, I don't know what come to get married. You know, I just have fun. But the power of the anointing yeah. of that man of God, yeah. you know, uh, he called me into his office. And, and he was serious business. What are your intentions All right. with my daughter? All right. All right. And I told him, yeah, I don't have no intentions. We're just having fun, you know. And, and, and to make a long story short, the godly influence that he has had over my life. You know, where, where I was running from the things that God called me to do, I began to run to those things with all of my heart. And I give God praise because the bishop put his blessing on me and gave me his daughter. And, and we, we, just, we just celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary. Amen, amen. That's a good place to give God praise. So I want to encourage, I want to encourage everybody in the room who... Amen. For, for the men, for the men, for the men. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife. Now, now, not, not she that finds a husband. But, but he that findeth a wife finds a good thing. And what the Bible says, and obtains favor. Somebody been reading their Bible. Of the Lord. And so, if you want to have God's favorite gentleman, make a decision. I was just talking to my brother, my older brother, and, and he's still out there. He, he's a rascal. You know what I mean? And, 
and, and, and we just had an issue where, you know, a lot of times I go with him, he has five or six women in one room. So we end up having to do this juggling act, you know. And he just had some girl call the house, another girl call the house, and it was this big drama. And what I had to tell him was, knowing that my brother has a real bad attitude and a short temper, I'm telling him, grow up. And that's, that's pretty much what our men need to understand today. You know, it's time to grow up and make a sound decision. Because when you do it God's way, you're blessed. You know, and when you do it the other way, you know, the Bible said, He that sows to the flesh, see, I don't even mean to talk about, shall of the flesh reap corruption. So you deal with the baby mama drama. You deal with the baby daddy drama. Those are things while you're feeling all good, you ain't thinking about. But 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 when reality comes and y'all arguing and fussing and fighting, you say, man, I wish I never laid eyes on him. Because you did it outside of God's will. I just want to encourage somebody. I just want to encourage you. Understand that when you do it the right way, you stay connected to the man and the woman of God. In your due season, you're going to reap if you pray now. Amen, amen. And so let us continue, praise God, to lift up our man and woman of God. Let's continue to support one another. Let's continue to encourage one another. Let's continue to build one another up. Because, you know, and God is really up to something. He's really up to something. You know, it's interesting how, uh, Brother Isaiah, so many times God will give you a thought. Or, or an idea, and and look like Pastor that you just can't get away from it until he allows you to, you know, and and, and it's at those moments where you know I, I'm beginning to be very sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying, and, and it seems that uh, the Holy Spirit has been impressing it upon me that. Praise God. Because of the lateness of the hour in which we live. Yes, yes. You know, because of the fact that uh, time is winding up. Right. You know, you know, Jesus is soon to return. Yes. You know, they, they've said it all of my life. And I know they've said it before I, I was even born. And Jesus is coming back. Yes. You know, and, and, but, but I believe that, that we've become uh, desensitized to that saying. You know. Because, uh, you know, we become like those people in Scripture who, who said, where is the promise of his coming? But I'm so glad that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, shall he not make it good? It's the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His compassions, they fail not, for they are renewed every morning. And great is his faithfulness unto us. I'm glad today that God is faithful. Man, he's faithful to his word. And whatever he said he would do in his word, that he will do. Amen. But, 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 but we, become, we become so desensitized to, to that statement. You know, you know, but, but you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting how we become so detached from that statement. But Jesus is coming back. You know, his coming is nearer than ever before. And because of this, you know, the Holy Spirit has impressed it upon me, Pastor, that it's time for the church to come together. It's time. It's time. Time for the church to come together on a whole nother plane, on a whole new level. Time for us, you know, to come together on a, on a whole nother united way. Now, not just in a superficial kind of a way. Praise God. Not just in a way, bless God, that demonstrates a show before the eyes of men. Yes. It, it's time. Yes. It, it's time for the church to, to come together. Amen. You know, uh, 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 here we are, Pastor. Here we are. We're, we're, we're in, in, in the last moments. Last moments of the last moments. Yes. Of the grace period. You, you know, the period... Uh, praise God, that lies between the 69th and 70th week spoken of by the prophet Daniel. Here we are in, in this last moment. And, and God is so ready. He's so willing. He's so able to do wonderful things through the body of Christ in this last moment. 
amen, before the eyes of men, but because of our lack of understanding. Y'all yeah, might not like me today. But because of our refusal to go forward in the thing that God has revealed to us through our man of God. Yeah. Because, amen, of our, amen, our immaturity and our carnality. Yeah. You know, many things that God is able to do, he simply will not do because we will not get the concept that we need one another to the point that we must all come together. You say, well, 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 you know, now, now, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, please don't misunderstand me, you know, because we do see, praise God, the move and the hand of God moving corporately throughout the body of Christ on some level. But it really does, it really does. It, it pales in comparison to the thing that God wants to do through the body of Christ in this last hour. Amen. That he might blow the mind of natural man and bring glory unto himself. Praise God if we could just all come together. You say, well, Brother Brent, how is it? How is it? And you can add, you can say, you can fix it in your mouth to say that we yet need to come together. We're reaching more people than we've reached, amen, in the past. You know, we, we, we're using technology now. We're, we're touching more lives. How is it, amen, that you can ask, to, you can say that we need to come together. Well, so many isms. All right. So many schisms. All right. All right. So many big eyes. So many little yous. So many attitudes. So many seeds of discord sown. You know, so, so many plans and purposes that so many, so many plans and, and, and so many, so many agendas that will perpetuate the plans and purposes of the devil instead of perpetuating the plans and purposes of Almighty God. And, and you know, we really do. We need to come together. For, for the Bible declares, if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. And so we need to understand, saying that we need to come together. Man, I've been looking in the book of Ephesians. You know, I found the book of Ephesians, Sister Roberta. I heard you talking about. I found it to be a wonderful blessing. I found it to be, amen, amen, a, a beautiful addition to New Testament canonization of Scripture. I found that the book of Ephesians, it's extremely ecclesiological in nature. The, the book of Ephesians, it wants to speak to the church. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, and I was I was looking in in the sixth chapter, and and a very familiar passage over there at the tenth verse. You know, over there, uh, and then you you can go ahead and find it if if you want to just keep on. You know, but we're going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit. You know, over there where the apostle Paul says, "Finally, my brethren." Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yeah. And, 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 and as I begin to look at this scripture, begin to contemplate, yeah. begin to meditate on the scripture. You know, my mind began, Pastor, to go through different thought patterns. You know, begin to, you know, entertain different ways we could go with this scripture. Even begin to think about, uh, Sister Roberta, different topics that we could use. And, and you know, there was one that sort of stood out in my mind above all the rest. And, and I wanted to propose this thought to you this morning in the form of a question. I was wondering if you would help me this morning to express it by just repeating after me and saying, will the real church, will the real church stand up and fight? Stand up and fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let that marinate for a minute. You know, what I realize, Pastor, is, you know, so many of us don't really understand what time it is. We, we, we really don't see the urgency of the hour, you know. Amen. We really, you know, we become so religious. You know, we, we come to church so ritualistically, you know. We don't have, amen, a real, we have a form of godliness but denies the power thereof, you know. Amen. But we really do. We need to let this sink in real quick. Let it go deep in your spirit. Amen. Because we want to say it one more time, but this time I want you to reach down and grab something. Amen. I want you to, amen, protect your voice, amen, and say it this morning as if you are angry with the devil and say this, say, will the real church, the real church stand, up and fight? stand up and fight? 
uh huh, uh huh, yeah, yeah, the Apostle Paul, he starts off, he starts off, he starts off with that word finally, that word finally, that word finally is very interesting to me, in that portion of scripture, you know, that word finally, it represents a shift, you know, a change, you know, a transition, if you please, you know, in the literary monologue of the Apostle, you know, that, that, that the word finally, it, 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 it not only indicates for us that, you know, this, this epistle is getting ready to come to a close, and, you know, the Apostle Paul, he, he says some, some very powerful things on this side of the finally. Amen. But but this finally, amen, it also indicates for us that everything that the Apostle Paul has said from the beginning of the book up until amen. this point have reached the climax. Amen. And you, you, you need to understand that the Apostle Paul, he, he says some wonderful things and he builds on some beautiful things that, amen, they unfold as you go forwardly throughout the book, you know, because he speaks of a a cosmic Christology, which says that, amen, everything in the heavenly realm and the earthly realm, amen, is aligning itself and bringing itself under the headship and the authority, praise God, under the subjectivity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, you know, he speaks of a, 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 a developed ecclesiology. He talks about, you know, he's not talking about uh, one specific church or one individual group of people, amen, but he's talking Talking about, amen, this great worldwide body of believers now known as the saints. Amen. He talks about a developed, praise God, ecclesiology. And I really... I really, really found this part to be a blessing. Amen. I found this part to be very enlightening and very inspiring where he talks about a developed ecclesia. I mean, he talks about a realized eschatology. He, he speaks in terms of, he says that we are already seated in heavenly places on the right hand of the Father. You know, wonderful information that the Apostle Paul spells out for us. Amen. And then he goes, bless God, he goes into talking about, praise God, the Christian possession, you know, amen. He says that in, in, in chapter one, amen, he talks about how every spiritual blessing is ours now that we, praise God, have come into the knowledge of Christ. Now that we have received Christ as our Lord and Savior, he said every spiritual blessing is yours. You stand privy to every spiritual blessing in the kingdom, you know, and he goes farther, amen, to let us understand and that all of these spiritual blessings, all of these blessings that are freely given to us are given to us based upon the work of the Trinity in the soteriological process of man. Amen. And so, amen, he goes into verse, in chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, you know, he talks about how, you know, God the Father is the one that plans our salvation. He goes into some specifics as to what God, the, some of the things that God the Father does in the salvation process. Because we find out that, praise God, he chooses us. We found out that, amen, he predestines us to adoption. Amen. And then we find that, praise God, he bestows his grace upon us. The Bible declares, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption of Christ of, of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Aren't you glad this morning that God hath planned our salvation? That's a wonderful thing to, to think about Pastor House. Praise God before God laid the foundation of the world Amen. Before time began, listen, say this with me. Say, say, time is an invention. Time is an invention. Yeah, yeah, before time began, you know, it, it's so wonderful to think about how, you know, we were in the presence of God. You know, it's so wonderful to think about, amen, that we were there, you know, in eternity. We were present, amen, and out of all of the people, amen, that, amen, that came across God in eternity, amen, that, that God could have chosen, amen. He singled you out, amen, called you by name. He directed. Just step, uh, we just in order to, to be included 
in his family. I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. And it's scriptural. It's scriptural. Praise God. Because you do remember how. You remember how. Hey, Amen. God told Jeremiah. He said, before I formed you in your mama's belly. What did he say? He said, I knew you. He said, before you came forth out of her womb. He said, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. I'm just trying to get you to understand this morning. That God the Father is the one that plans our salvation. You want to give God the praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And then we find that, amen, God the Son, God the Son is the one that procures our salvation. He is the one, man, that obtains our salvation for us. And how does he do it? He does it through his blood. For the Bible says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. It's because of the blood. He, he paid the price, you know. And man, the scripture let us know that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. You know, we saw in the Old Testament how, you know, that the high priest, you know, he would take the blood of the bulls and the goats and the calves. And, you know, he would take it into the Holy of Holies, you know, and he would use it, amen, for, for a sacrifice for himself and for the people for the year. You know, the Bible called it the atonement, you know, amen. But under the new covenant, praise God, Hebrews talks about the superiority of Christ over all of the Old Testament antithesis. It talks about, amen, the superiority of, amen, the new covenant over, over the old covenant. Amen. The Hebrews lets us know that it was neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. It was because of the blood of Jesus. It was the blood that Jesus shed. It was the blood of Jesus that he shed on Calvary's cross that paid the price for our redemption. He said, I bought you. He said, I apolutrosis in the Greek. I bought you with my blood. And I want you to understand today that the same blood that Jesus shed, it still works. And the Bible let me know, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you don't believe, excuse me, that I've been redeemed, follow me down to Jordan Street. I stepped in the water and the water was cold. Feel my body, but not my soul. I'm so glad God picked me up one day, set me on a solid foundation, gave me a song that the angels can't sing. I've been redeemed, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Say yes. Hallelujah. And the Bible lets us know, hallelujah, that God the, the Holy Spirit is the one that seals our salvation. And so we see that all of these spiritual blessings are given to us. Can I slow down for a moment? Based upon the work of the Trinity and the salvation process. Amen. And, and you know, these, these spiritual blessings, they, they're so heavy. Amen. They're so, so spiritual that, you know, the Apostle Paul, you know, he, he begins to pray, you know, because, amen, he, he, he wants us, amen, to really get a sense of what, what we really have, you know. What we have is so powerful, so dynamic, amen, amen. And what, what the Apostle Paul wants us to get an understanding of, amen, is that we, we, we need, amen, we need to have an awakening, you know. We, we need to be awakened, you know. He wants us to understand, praise God, what we have, you know. And he prays, amen, that, that God would grant unto the child of God the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. He prays, amen, because he wants us to understand, amen, what is his glorious riches of his inheritance toward us. And that exceeding immeasurable power that's at work in believers. 
And he goes as far, brother, amen, to say that this power that's at work in us, he compares it to the very same power that rose Jesus from the grave. And now that's power. You need to tell somebody, we've got power. You've got power over all of your circumstances. You've got a power that got the drop over all of the forces of God. You've got power over all of your circumstances. You've got power. Power. Excuse me. I don't mean to get excited about it, but I've got power. Power from on high. Power. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. It's no wonder that Paul declared to the church at Philippi, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Somebody shout glory. Glory to the name of you know, the Apostle Paul. You know, he goes on, you know, he moves on. He moves on, praise God, to chapter 2. You know, he kind of switches reels. You know, he changes up a little bit, you know begins to talk about, praise God, the Christian conversion, you know, he begins to talk about it, you know, from a once then and now sort of speech, you know, you, you can see, amen, in, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, amen, this sort of rags to riches vernacular come to life in the first verse where he declares, and you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And you know, the Apostle Paul, he, he begins to go forward and he explains how, you know, we all had our time where, you know, we, we walked after, you know, the, the lust of our flesh. He explains how, you know, we did, you know, according to our own will and our own way, you know. We went forwardly in our own way, you know. We, we did our own thing. <laughs> we, we didn't have, amen, a desire to be kept, amen. Amen. We, we wanted to, amen, we wanted to, uh, to, 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 to sow our our oats, you know, we wanted to, amen, we wanted to do our thing, but even, praise God, praise God, even in, you know, the midst of all of that, I like what verse 4 says in chapter 2, amen, because we were going our own way, you know, we were doing our own thing, but verse 4 starts off and it says, but God, if you was doing your own thing, but God, you know, it was running out the street, but God, you know, you was sleeping with everybody you could, but God, you know, you know, you was doing everything against God you knew you could do, amen, but God, you know, and, and you know, I just thank God today, because, because, God, who, amen, the Bible said is so rich in mercy for what, for his great love wherewith he loved us, amen, the Bible told us, I don't know about you today, but I'm glad that he loved us, and the Bible declared, God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad that, you know, I understand better now, why that songwriter picked up his anointed pen, and he began to write the words. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within. I was seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair cry from the world. He lifted me, not saving my love, lifted me. When nothing else could help, it was the love of God. You ought to give God the praise. And man, he goes and talks about how it was nothing but God's love. It was the love of God. While we were going our own way, he talks about how it was nothing but God's love. I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad that Jesus loved me. I'm so glad that Jesus cared about me. I'm so glad he sacrificed his life for me. Can you say yes? I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad he did. He loved me when I didn't deserve his love. When I turned my back on him, when I sinned willingly, he yet loved me. He gave me another chance. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm so glad that God loved me. Say yes. And so he begins to go on. He goes further in his conversation. And he switches reels. You know, he says that all of this stuff is not given by anything that we've done of our own self. It's not given because of any goodness of our own. But he said it's given to us based upon, amen, it's because of God's grace. It was because of God's unmerited love and favor toward man. God's grace is what causes him to bestow supernatural gifts upon man. Also to provide 
saturated with salvation with the one condition of exercising faith in Jesus Christ. It's because of God's grace. That's the reason the scripture declared. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Can you give God the praise right there? And then the apostle Paul moves his conversation. He switches real here. And it moves his conversation from matters pertaining to a man, from, from matters pertaining to soteriology. And it moves to ecclesiology. And I believe it's because of the massive implications of salvation upon the church. And he begins to talk about a Christ-centered unity from three angles. He talks about it from a heavenly realm. And he says that a man, a child of God, has been brought from a place of spiritual darkness into this marvelous light and he's seated with Christ in heavenly places on the right hand of the Father. He talks about it from a cross in an angle and he says that the cross of Christ have destroyed all of the barriers of old and created for the body, for the body of Christ. One building, one body, fitly joined together with Christ being the head and we being the body of Christ that filleth all in all. And then he talks about it from his own apostolic angle. And he says that it's through me, amen, that God allowed me to bring the message of equality between you and the Gentile, I mean, and the Jew. Now you can stand on level ground. You have equal access to the Father. You're one in Christ now. He talks about it from his own apostolic angle. Amen. And he just basically goes on and lets us know, amen, that we are, amen, what our Christian position is, amen, that we're members of the household of faith and one to another, amen, but what many people don't understand about the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, amen, it's a circulatory book, amen, it's a, it's a, it's an in-cycle, it was a book that was designed to circulate throughout all of the region of Asia Minor, Amen. The reason why you see the name Ephesian in, in, in the canonization of Scripture that, is because when you look at the original manuscripts, uh, the, the name is left off because uh, of the circulatory nature of the letter. Uh, when the letter would arrive at the different locations, uh, they were able to enter in their own locale into the paperwork. Uh, but the reason why you see Ephesian in the canonization of Scripture uh, is because Ephesians uh, was the most popular city in the region. Amen. And so you need to understand. Amen. Well, many people have a problem with the Apostle Paul. You know, they, they want to question if he even wrote this book. Because we find that Paul uh, spent a considerable amount of time in Ephesus. But because of its, amen, detached nature, because of its impersonal nature, they say that the Apostle Paul is the way that he could have written this book. But the Apostle Paul didn't write the book of Ephesians. Amen. To deal with uh, problems that was associated with one church. He didn't write the book of Ephesians to deal with one group. But he wrote the book of Ephesians to deal with problems that was associated with the whole body. Problems that everybody would have to deal with in their walk with Christ. Amen. And so he goes forward and he lets us understand amen, our Christian amen, purpose. And he said what worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. And so it brings us, amen, it brings us to this word finally. Amen. This word finally. It shows us uh, that the Apostle Paul he switches reels here because he wants us to understand. He wants us to have an internal understanding of the fact that if you're going to carry out the plans and purposes of Almighty God in your life, the Apostle Paul wants the child of God. He wants us to understand that we're going to have to be strong. But he wants us to further know that this strength cannot come from 
from our own ability. He wants us to understand that it cannot come from our own self. But if we got to understand, see, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting, Sister Roberta. Amen. Because he wants us to understand that the level of adversity that's coming against us shall even infiltrate the church. It's even going to infiltrate the leadership of the church. And so he's telling us that we've got to be strong. Amen. It's so interesting because as a young man growing up in a holiness church, I never thought, Pastor, that the church would be a place that would be so full of politicians. I never thought that the church would be a place that was so full of folk that just know how to work the system. Folk, amen, amen, that just know how to hobnob themselves into strategic places. Always want to get up to the head, man. Always, amen, want to be seen in the eyes of men. I want to help us to reprioritize. I want to help us to put this thing in perspective. Amen. Because it's not about, amen, being seen before the eyes of men. Amen. But it's about being approved by God. I don't know about you today, but I want to hear him say, well done. A good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few men. You're in, amen, to your salvation. Amen. And so we got to understand. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We've got to understand today. you got to be ready. Amen. You've got to be in a place where, amen, you understand that. Praise God. you got to wonder how. you got to be one that, amen, want to be close to God. Amen. Not be somebody that's so willing to be seen in the eyes of men. I wonder do I have anybody in the building that just want to be close to God. I just want to be close to him. In the midnight hour, I just want to be close to him. Oh, all day long, I just want to be close to him. Amen. When everybody else is doing everything else, I just want to be close to him. I just want more Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus all day long. As the heart panted after the water brook, my soul it panted after thee. I just want Jesus. It's no wonder Paul declared. But what things were gained to me, those I count it loss for Jesus Christ. He said, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I suffer the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I might win Christ. I just want to win Christ. I don't know about you today, but the old folks say, you can have this whole wide world. Y'all don't have to have church with me. Y'all ain't got to shout amen. You don't have to clap your hands. I will lift the mind eyes to the hills for which come my help. My help it comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And you see, yes, we got to pray. Understand, I just want more Jesus. Amen. Understand today, amen, what the Apostle Paul is telling us. We cannot fight this fight in our own strength. We cannot fight this fight in our own ability. You cannot fight this fight with your own intellect. But what the Apostle Paul is telling us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of God's might. Can you see that? And this is the point in Scripture. When we begin to see the things unfold, it talked about how all of creation and all of the heavenly realm and all of the earth realm is aligning itself and coming in line with the headship of Jesus Christ. We need to understand that the Apostle Paul, he goes forward and reminds us that we're in a battle. He says in verse 12, in chapter 6, that well-known scripture, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, 
against spiritual wickedness. What the Bible says in high places. And the Bible says that's Paul's special language. It's a euphemism for the spirit realm. He already told us in chapter 1 and verse 3 that our spiritual blessings are there. He told us in chapter 2 and verse 6 that Jesus is there. In chapter 1 verse 18 that Jesus is sitting there. He tells us in chapter 2 and verse 6 that we are seated there with Christ. He tells us in chapter 3 and verse 10 amen that the angels operate from there. He tells us in chapter 6 and verse 10 amen that demons operate there. It would seem like everything is going on there. Uh, to put it a little bit more clear, uh, what the Apostle Paul, uh, he wants us to understand uh, that everything uh, as visible uh, and physical uh, is preceded uh, by something invisible uh, and spiritual. Uh, and in order for you uh, to understand uh, the thing that's visible and physical, uh, you've got to understand uh, something about a man that's spiritual uh, and invisible. Uh, in other words, today, Hey, amen. If you want to understand huh, the visible physical fruit, huh, you've got to understand huh, something about the invisible spiritual root. Huh. You've got to know today, huh, amen, that there's something that went on in the spirit realm. Huh, amen. Before time, huh, amen, that already set the stage huh, for what you've got to do huh, in this earth realm. Huh. And so Paul is telling us, huh, if you align yourself, with who you are get down here in this earth realm you got power from on high you got power on the power of the enemy say today you need a refreshing in your mind have your mind renewed we need one another you need to come together and see the power that God has given us we are better together your neighbor today and say neighbor we are better together let's fight this fight can you say yes understanding that God has already given us the victory fight this fight today understanding though you might be hit sometime and though you might be knocked down 